That was Michael Cohen, Trump's former attorney, President Trump's former attorney, speaking before the House Oversight Committee. And another person in that room was East Bay Congressman Mark DeSaunier, a member of that committee. Your takeaway from the testimony? Well, there was so much in there, um, and we really should have gone to a second round of questioning. It was a five to six hour hearing, but there's more that we never got to in terms of things. Another question line I wanted to do was uh, donations to the foundation, which looks like they were IRS violations that he directed, President Trump directed. Okay, is this while he's president? It was both before, well, no, most of this was almost all before, but it was when he was a candidate as well. Okay, so this is before he takes office. Mm -hmm. So we've decided to investigate Trump as a private citizen mm -hmm. now, as opposed to what he's done as president. How does Congress well, do that? There, there's stuff when he was president as well. So um, the payments, the check that everyone's seen on television. That went to Stormy Daniels to through pay. Michael Cohen's no, no, to no. pay or to this pay. This is to reimburse Cohen for, for him paying for Stormy Daniels okay. and the other woman. Um, that happened when he was president. So it's not all before, but a lot of it was before. Okay, so we, what else are we going to be doing then? Are we going to be going for the president's tax returns? Are we going to be investigating the foundation? Or is that what Congress is going to be doing I think now? that's where we'll be going next. A lot of what to, yes, or this week was was establishing a case for why you would go after these other things. Okay, but again, here's a, a guy who is a convicted liar, mm -hmm. an admitted liar, and we bring him out in for all the cameras. How much of this was to get information? How much of this was theater? Well, remember, and this was your, your following in the, into the Republicans' argument, he is a liar. But lots of times we've found out about criminal activity through people who were liars, who worked within the organization. The reason, I would say, the most compelling reason to believe him was he was going to spend more time in jail if he lied to us. That was the first thing the chairman said. And he's got, he's got Mueller and he's got other investigators listening to everything he said. So if he lied to us again, he'll be going to prison for more time. So... Whatever he's told you, or publicly here, supposedly he's told the special investigator, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, special counsel. But he's told them more. Okay, because so if we he's told them more, and they have privity of the information, why not just have the special counsel and special investigator look at it? Why convene congressional hearings to replicate what they're doing except for to make it public versus something that might be private? What's, what's the Well, he testified there? twice as well this week in private and into the intelligence committees. So it's both. It's to complement those investigations. We've never had an administration like this in our history. But if we have a special investigator, why are we doing it in Congress as well? I mean, because to we, American people, said, is this theater? Is this what we're right. getting theater? So in investigations, you might have somebody who was being investigated in San Francisco for state, for state laws or for federal laws. So different jurisdictions look at... But what's Congress's like jurisdiction in this? Congress's jurisdiction is we're a co-equal branch of government. We're supposed to provide oversight. Is it oversight. you don't trust the Justice Department? No, we provide oversight for the administration for everything. That's what Congress's job is. That's what the founders put in the Constitution. Right, but then we have a special counsel we do. to doing that, too. So I'm so trying, you, you, I, I'm trying you, you to... Don't, you don't I don't understand. recall the founders having that, so I'm trying to figure out how it works. Both. Okay, so both. So, we're going to have a congressional investigation, and we're going to have Robert Mueller's investigation. Right, but what we're doing is we're trying to coordinate with them so we don't get in their way, they don't get in our way. Where do we go from here? Well, I think what we'll do now is we... The witnesses, and as Chairman Cummings said in press conference afterwards, which I was part of, is that the people he mentioned then we will call them most likely. So his chief financial officer for Trump, he, he's already talking to the other investigations apparently, uh, Alan Weaselberg. He, he's worked for him even longer. What was the biggest takeaway, single thing that you got in there that would, let's say, lead to questions about impeachment? Everything. Or was it? Everything? I mean, there's no one thing. I mean, the, the thing that, and this were one of my question lines, were this deal for Trump Tower would have been the tallest building in Europe. They were pursuing that. This is one of the reasons he's going to jail, because he lied about when they stopped. Uh, they were pursuing that right up to the election, right up to when he was sworn in. So you've got the campaign manager in meetings talking about Trump Tower. At the same time, we now know that the Russians were trying to get him elected. Okay, we're going to have to pursue more of this I because know. this is... Just You're going to call starts. me back under oath. <laughs> it was certainly a riveting week in Washington and for the media. Michael Cohen's testimony before your committee. Mm -hmm. So the question becomes, we've heard allegations of everything from racism to tax fraud to payoffs coming out of the White House to silence people who had affairs with the president. Uh, question is, where do we take it from here? 
Well, the immediate thing is yesterday, uh, Chairman Cummings asked for everything that the White House has vis-a-vis -vis Jared Kushner and the president supposedly uh, directing him to get a security clearance, which he, the people who did that advised against it. And the purpose of that is? To find out if any laws were violated. Uh, uh, the then chief of staff, Kelly, apparently said uh, we shouldn't do this. There are about 3,000 people who have the highest level of security clearance, that, which means they have a big background check to make sure they don't have conflicts of interest um, and other things. Well, Kushner went through this, and then supposedly the president went in and demanded that he get the highest security level. And that's against the law? It could be. We have to find out. So, How uh, would it be against the law? If, if the president overrode what the statute says you should do for uh, security clearances, then that would be a violation of the law. We have to look at the statute. Um, so the, the chairman of the committee asked for all the information from the White House because we've asked uh, as, as long as three weeks ago and we've got no response. So this ask was prior to sending a subpoena to get the information. Okay. So just as a part of historical context, if somebody had high security clearance and they had access to all of that, and they wound up using it on a server in their home that was accessible it's by other... Thing. It's not the same thing, why well, not? It, it's not the same thing because this man has investments and he's going to Saudi Arabia. Uh -huh. So if he's got security clearance that's supposed to protect all of us, we want to know that. And the American public should see it. You know, this. I, I know you um, Republican types like to equate what happened with the Clintons. How about we just be nonpartisan on it and say no, what's good be. for one is good for I, the other and what's the press? I absolutely agree. Not everything is political. No, I absolutely agree. And this is an instance where in the few, next few months, in the year, we're going to have to do what Republicans and Democrats did in Watergate, is put the country ahead of party. I mean, it's part two-party system is part of the system, but we've got to do what's right for the country. Um, what this administration has done, in my view, as president and as candidate, far exceeds what any other president's done. Just what we found out about the WikiLeaks goes way beyond what happened in Watergate. Really? Well, it, it was a second-rate burglary, supposedly, uh, for Watergate. They didn't uh -huh. get the kind of depth of information that the WikiLeaks had because they'd broken into the Democratic National Committee's information. But what Different about, time, like, of uh, using the IRS, Nixon, to use the IRS to investigate people, FBI investigations? No, you are, say this exceeds that? What I heard, what I heard this week goes far beyond. What did you hear this week? I, the, the Cohen invested everything. I know, what was in, uh, so there was just so much, Phil. There was, he's, he's negotiating with the, the highest levels of the Russian government um, and people who are connected to Putin for the biggest building in Europe. At the same time, we know the Russians are uh, helping him get elected. My question line was, we got Cohen to admit that Lewandowski, his campaign manager at that time, was in the meeting with Cohen and Trump, three people, and they were discussing Trump or one of them going to Russia. Now, this is in June of 2016. This is just a few months before the general election. So all of this is presumably in the special counsel's hands, Robert Mueller, because Mr. Know. Cohen was testified with them and cooperated with them. Are you just trying to get this on the public record as well? So if the Mueller report isn't made public, you have all of this? Yes. But it's both. Now, remember in Watergate, you had public hearings in, in the Congress, and then you had special counsel Archibald Cox and Elliot Richardson pursuing their investigation. So they're complementary. Okay, what do you see as the outcome? Do you see this as a leading to impeachment? I don't, we don't know. We've got a, you know, people, and I voted twice for impeachment, um, but they came up way short. People have to realize there's a process that we have to pursue. They might not like it. People want impeachment right now. We don't have the votes to impeach him. And, you know, there's a famous line in Shakespeare, if you're going to strike at a king, you better kill him. If we're going to remove him from office, you better make sure you have all the information, and that's what we're doing. Well, the drama continues. And we have someone right in the thick of it. He's paid Congressman Mark DeSaunier.